Did you know that like cures like? Well, at least that's what homeopathy claims. An extraordinary claim indeed. While extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, does homeopathy have evidence to back its claim? Let's find out. This is homeopathy debunked. Homeopathy is a system of alternative medicine created in 1796 by Samuel Hahnemann based on his doctrine of like cures like. A claim that a substance that causes symptoms of a disease in healthy people would cure similar symptoms in sick people. In the late 18th and 19th centuries, mainstream medicine used methods like bloodletting and purging. These treatments often worsened situations and symptoms and sometimes proved fatal. Hahnemann rejected these practices. Initially in the 19th century, homeopaths made you avoid tea, alcohol, coffee, sweet food, onion, meat, no playing games, no masturbation, no pornographic texts and many more. Aconitum is an extremely dangerous plant which causes nausea, headache and diarrhea when we consume it. Homeopaths assert that because influenza causes the same symptoms, a homeopathic remedy can be made from aconitum. Now superficially it seems a bit similar to how vaccines work, but it is not. Vaccines prevent an illness by exposing the body to small amounts of the illness itself, which causes the body to create antibodies and thereby become resistant. In homeopathy, the more dilute the solution, the more potent it will be. I heard of a guy in Florida, he was on homeopathic medicine, he died of an overdose, he forgot to take the pill, I hope you got it. There are several potency scales in homeopathy, Hahnemann created the C scale by diluting the substance to a factor of 100 at each stage. It was favored by Hahnemann for most of his life. A 2C dilution turns out to be one part of the original medicine in 10,000 parts of the solution. So the commonly sold 30C mixture means one part ingredient in 1 million billion 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 parts of the solution. A popular homeopathic treatment for the flu is a 200C dilution of duck liver marketed under the name Oscillococcinum. A 40C is a solution of one atom of the ingredient in all the atoms of the entire universe as the solution, that is 10 raised to 80 atoms. Oscillococcinum would thus require 10 raised to 320 more universes to simply have one atom in the final solution. The chances that a molecule has been in contact with the active ingredient is negligible, yet it is supposed to remember this even though water doesn't clearly have memory. However, it is unable to remember everything else it has been in contact with such as minerals like salt, purifying agents like chlorine and even microbes and other living organisms. The Russian Academy of Sciences has become the latest body to declare homeopathy as pseudoscience and endangers people who believe it to be effective. The memorandum said that homeopathy should not have a place in Russia's national health system. The internationally highly respected Australian National Health and Medical Research Council have conducted what is certainly the most thorough and independent evaluation of homeopathy in its 200 year long career. Already their preliminary report had confirmed that homeopathy is nothing other than treatment with placebos. Predictably this caused a storm of opposition from homeopathy enthusiasts and they were invited to give evidences to the contrary. The council then considered this evidence carefully and have now submitted their final report. An extremely rigorous meta-analysis of 1800 studies found that they came to the same conclusion as before. It pointed out that people who choose homeopathy may put their health at risk if they reject or delay treatments for which there is good evidence for safety and effectiveness. Other health organizations that have denounced and rejected homeopathy include the World Health Organization, the United Kingdom's House of Commons, the European Academy's Science Advisory Council, the Swiss Federal Health Office, American Medical Association, and many more. The reason why homeopathy is popular is the placebo effect in which a fake treatment and inactive substance like sugar, distilled water or saline solution can sometimes improve a patient's health just because the patient thinks and expects that it will be helpful. 
Techno babble is the hallmark of pseudoscience. Phrases like like cures like, such lines of reasoning makes the supposed mechanism with which homeopathy works sound to be reality. Those marketing homeopathy use complex and technical sounding terms in order to give the impression that homeopathy is sophisticated enough to be trusted. Still another factor is that homeopathic substances are sold in pharmacies next to the evidence based over the counter medications. All of these things together afford homeopathy an air of legitimacy. Modern medicine is efficient. It saves millions of lives each year. But it's also a strictly organized system. Tight budgets force doctors and nurses to deal with a lot of patients. Consultations need to be time efficient, diagnosis made quickly, treatments fast, which can leave patients feel left behind, scared and invisible. On the other hand, homeopaths generally begin with detailed examinations of their patients' histories including their emotional, physical and mental state, their life circumstances and any physical or emotional illnesses. Homeopathic practice has been criticized as unethical because it discourages the use of effective treatment with the World Health Organization warning against using it as a treatment to try to treat severe diseases such as HIV, TB, malaria and even influenza. Patients who choose homeopathy rather than evidence-based medicine risk missing timely diagnosis and effective treatment of serious diseases like cancer. The Indian government recognizes homeopathy as one of its national systems of medicine. It has established Ayush, which includes a system for homeopathy under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Always remember, correlation does not imply causation. One day I ate an apple and the next day my fever went away. So the apple made the fever go away. No, this is not how association and causation are established in science. It would have happened anyway with the help of my immune system. For those of us who reside in the material world where laws of physics hold relevance, a homeopathic remedy is nothing more than water or a sugar pill. If a homeopathic solution doesn't contain true ingredients, then how can it have a physical impact on our body? Homeopathy is a faith-based practice and as such, largely impervious to rational argumentation. Personal anecdotes are the most unreliable form of evidence in all of science and are hence rejected. Upon closer examination of the culture surrounding much of alternative medicine, it is apparent that people are encouraged just as in religious circles to cite personal experiences as evidence for the treatments of their choice. Homeopaths often ignore meta-analysis in favor of cherry-pick positive results, such as by promoting a particular observational study as if it were more informative than randomized controlled trials. Homeopathy is a pseudoscience, a quackery, a belief that is incorrectly presented as scientific. Homeopathic preparations are not effective for treating any condition. Homeopathy is a billion dollar industry with extreme profit margin. This bizarre remedy has become embedded in our national health service. Now I want to find out why we are paying tax to fund other people's gullibility. I think something should be done about that and it all lies in education. Largely, it's the media who are to be blamed for this. They shamelessly promote all kinds of pseudoscience of this sort because it promotes their sponsors. It's the bottom line, the dollar line. That's what they're looking at. We really must do something about this. What do you guys think? Please tell me in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and share. If you did like it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, sayonara.